Hey everyone, how's it going here? Captain Gabe, and this is my first video tutorial that I'm making for the flight simulator. So just right off the bat, I'd like to apologize if there's any confusion or misunderstanding uh, in this video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and I'll see if I can get to it. Today we're going to be talking about packets, and the, which is basically gnats of the Northern Pacific, um, generally for crossing between North America and Northern Asia, specifically Japan. So, getting right into it, there's packets routes and there's these things called UPRs or user preferred routes. User preferred routes are entirely different from packets and a lot of people seem to confuse UPRs with what the actual definition is, which is user preferred routes. It is not a literal user preferred route going through uh, Anchorage airspace. It's a completely different system and I'll get into that in just a bit. Packets is a organized track system. It's, it stands for Pacific Organized Track System. It is a set of routes that are established by Oakland Oceanic, Fukuoka Airspace, and Anchorage uh, Airspace as well. And they are determined based on many variables, including uh, weather events, volcanic ash uh, segments that may be present in the airspaces connecting North America to Japan. So I'll go ahead and go over this. This is from the FAA. This is just basically a guideline for planning with packets and the basic summary of how they work. It's established with Oakland Oceanic, Fukuoka, and Anchorage airspaces. Uh, TDMs, those are more for actual real-world dispatchers. We can't really utilize that in the flight sim. And for uh, item C, number and designator of packet tracks. So basically, there's multiple tracks for westbound and eastbound. As you can see here, Hawaii to Japan, for example, is track Alpha, Hawaii to Japan, track Bravo, Japan to Hawaii is 11, Japan to Hawaii 12, and so on. And there, Some are optional because some are published, some are not every day. Usable flight levels, and it goes into those rules here, lateral spacing. It's basically, these are not for specific flight plans, but for how the tracks are planned. They are planned to be at least 50 nautical miles apart, so it's very organized, very safe for Pacific Crossing. ATC procedures, it goes into that detail. I'm going to put these links in the description so you can read through it. You can determine how down to a T you want to follow these real world procedures. There's no rules with VATSIM and the guys that operate these airspaces are pretty good at uh, keeping it organized although there's not as much traffic on these routes as there are between North America and Europe. So just something to keep in mind. Going back to UPR routes and what people usually plan their routes from North America to Asia. UPRs are real, of course. However, there are a lot of stricter guidelines for flying UPRs. UPRs are not just, oh, I'm going to plan to enter, for example, I'll zoom in here. I'm going to plan to enter at GOATS and I'm going to enter Magadan airspace over here in this sector. No, no that's not a UPR. UPRs are for getting from North America to Northern Asia, specifically Japan, through airways, which Romeo 220, Romeo 580, Romeo 591, for example. So an actual UPR route is entering through one of those waypoints on the eastern side of Anchorage airspace and entering one of these airways. If it enters Magadan, that's not a UPR. Those are different. Those might be company routes something else and those I'll also post the link for UPR so going right into it let's say for today's example I'm going to be doing a simulated flight from Houston Texas to Tokyo Narita Airport I'm using triple seven three hundred the way I like to plan it trying to keep it as real world as possible for the flight planning aspect I use sky vector first and foremost so for example today I'm gonna do Houston to Tokyo Narita so there's your basic great circle route. As you can see here, it takes you almost directly over Seattle, just touching the tip of Alaska, right over those airways that go south of Magadan, those Romeo airways, and then to Japan. Starting with the basics, getting a route from Houston to Seattle. This is over mainland USA. There's a lot of airspaces, a lot of ATC in this area. So what I like to do is go to FlightAware and just find a flight that is in progress from those two cities. So for example, this one, they took this route. I'm just going to copy and just slap that in there. There's our new route. Now, how do you get PACOTS routes? Well, you're going to want to check the FAA NOTAM site. I'll put the link in the description. You're going to want to check Oakland Oceanic Zulu Alpha Kilo. 
and as you can see it lists it right here click search if you scroll down a bit you can see they have tracks listed here they had and as for today they have track alpha charlie echo fox or hotel mike and then julia and kilo now we're going to go to sky vector again and on the right side you're going to want to click on layers nav and pacific tracks west since we're flying westbound so what you're going to want to do also is check your weather charts over to prog charts i'll put the link in the description and just click on this case northern pacific so as we can see from this prog chart here there's a lot of jet streams that are going to be going doing giving us a headwind if we fly more north so i would want to fly more south actually because these routes are published daily and ever changing for these kind of situations we can go back to sky vector and we can see well yeah they have routes established that are far more southern so now this is going to change our route entirely uh, track Charlie keeps us as far north, which means we'll tra uh, cover less distance. So I actually might go with Track Charlie. So what I'm going to do, click here, and we see Track Charlie. Go back to the Notams and look for Track Charlie, which is right here. And we see the same Notam is active. And we see it's from 10, 1900 to 1108. And we can see here. They are the same. So now we can say, well, we still want to fly up to Seattle. We can do that. We can still enter from Seattle and then fly that way. So the way these are laid out, you have the in route waypoints, you have your entry waypoints, and you have your exit for this route, and of course, remarks. So what we're going to do is from Seattle, because we're already going to be in the air, I'm just going to copy this initial part, enter it. And as you see, it, it enters our first waypoint right here at Track Charlie. You can get this. You can copy and paste from here exactly. So, for example, I just copied this from the actual FAA Notum website. Now I'm going to do the end route. Copy, paste, enter. Now it follows Track Charlie exactly, including all the waypoints. Now there's still an exit: Emron, OTR7, and Edna. We see Emron. I just copied from there, so I'm going to replace that. Enter, and from here. Our flight plan ends at ADNAP, which is right where Goka Airspace usually likes to assign uh, stars for the aircraft approaching Haneda, Narita, or any other airport in Japan. So now I have my flight plan fully established on Sky Vector. Now, to get this from Sky Vector to the simulator, I'm going to use Simbrief, a free flight planning service, and I'm going to copy this route that I just created on Sky Vector. And on Simbrief, this is your initial front page when you sign in click on dispatch create a new flight and I'm gonna go ahead and just fill out some information real quick okay so now you can see that they've already cre that Simbrief will create a flight plan for you and you can use this it's up to you but as you see it's completely different from what we just planned on sky vector using real nodams based off of the real weather so I'm gonna I already copied from sky vector so now place that analyze route Stick 7 not found is probably an older air rack. I'm going to replace it with stick 6. And there you go. So now we have our route. We have our aircraft. Now let's set up an ETOP scenario. I'm going to do 180 minutes. ETOP entry point is going to be Seattle because we're still over mainland here. We can use that. And entry point, we can use our alternate that we already have, which is Haneda. Suitable airports, I'm going to try to estimate and see, let's say Anchorage is good. And for the next one, let's try and use a Russian uh, Kamchatka Airport, Magadan. Verify inputs. One or more exceeds 180 range. That's fine. Let's try another. Here we go. So now we have our ETOP situation set up. So now I've just created my basic flight plan on Simbrief. So you can now edit your flight plan as much as possible. And I highly suggest you learning about Simbrief and utilizing this for your flight planning on VATSIM. So now we go to the top and we generate OFP. Now we have our flight plan generate it for the flight simulator. We have our route over the mainland US and now we're following track Charlie. Once you have your OFP generated through Simbrief, you can download it for PMDG. You would insert that into PMDG uh, flight plan folder just as you would for any other flight plan the way you normally do. And you would load that directly into the sim the way you would for any other flight. Now let's say you want to file with VATSIM. I'm going to go ahead and click that, and I'm going to log in. Now that I'm logged in here, we can see everything is already pre-filled out for us. Down here, you have more 
fields that you can fill out for your flight depending on what you need. For example, remarks, TCAS, you can leave TCAS, and call sign is all Nippon, he tops 180, step as needed, and I'll just go ahead and throw in Pacot's track Charlie. You would file your flight plan, and now VATSIM now holds your flight plan. The controllers will have everything for you. Once you have that all set up, you go back to your sim, load it into your FMS, and you are good to go. With that, I hope I explained it well. If you have any comments, questions, please leave it down in the comments, and I'll get to you. I hope this was a good video explanation. I hope you learned something, and I hope that VATSIM Sky has become a little bit more organized with this knowledge and utilization of real-life procedures. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.